gospel and then Ben will come and preach. Thank you. So the reading tonight is from Matthew chapter 28 verses 16 to 20 and it can be found on page 1001 in the church bibles Matthew 28 beginning at verse 16 Then the 11 disciples went to Galilee to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always, to the very end of the age. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Thanks be to God. Can you hear me okay? Good. Thank you, Julie, for the reading. Um, let me pray to begin. O oh Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Um, I want to start with a bit of an exercise. Um, so if you'd like to turn to the person next to you, and I want you to think of a story or film, or perhaps your favourite story or film, which ends where it began, which finishes where it starts. Okay, uh, I'm sure there are at least some ideas. Can anyone shout? Any ideas out? Any? Yeah, Gordon. Yeah. Okay. That's 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 a good example. Good one. <laughs> Any other stories? Yeah, that's the one I'm gonna share. Yeah, in 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 the Shire. Any other stories? Yes. Good one. Good one. Yeah, the example I thought of was Lord of the Rings. I think Harry Potter sort of finishes in Hogwarts where it sort of began, but anyway. Uh, but I, I always um, laugh, you know, in the film at least, there's the scene at the very end where Bilbo asks Frodo, do you remember what happened to that ring I gave you? <laughs> and Frodo says, I'm sorry, uncle, but I'm afraid I lost it. <laughs> it always makes me laugh. Um, but there's something um, just inherently fitting and pleasing when things finish where they begin. The, um, the ancient Greek philosophers, they believed that circular movement was the most perfect to begin where it starts. And there's that famous and rather sort of profound quote from the poet T.S. Eliot, you, you might know it, um, but he said, we shall not cease from exploration and the end of all our exploring will be to arrive where we started and know the place for the first time. Our passage today is the climactic finale 
of Matthew's Gospel, and it is widely appreciated by commentators that this closing section brings together all of the threads of Matthew's Gospel with an amazing elegance and an amazing simplicity. It all, it all wraps up here. Um, and But what I want to focus on this evening, as uh, this is just something which kind of which came to me as I was preparing. What I'd like to focus on is the fact that um, Jesus shares his final words with his disciples in the place where it all started. We read in verse 16 that Jesus tells them to go back to Galilee, back to Galilee where Jesus began his ministry. And so it says the 11 disciples went to Galilee to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. Just think at the very beginning of Jesus' gospel in Galilee, where Jesus first preached the Sermon on the Mount, that mountain, Jesus tells them to go there. So the final conclusion and handover, the commission, the great commission, as this passage is rightly known, it, it takes place as the disciples return to the beginning. And as we look at the three things that Jesus says to the disciples, we find that each of these three things repeat and affirm what was true from the very beginning of Jesus' call on the disciples' lives. These are truths about Jesus and his call on them that they need to hear again at the very end of the gospel as he as he commissions them they need to hear these things which have been true from the beginning they need to hear them again but at the same time as jesus has now completed his earthly ministry as he comes to the end of his time with them on earth as he as he commissions and sends them into the world these truths are given a, a, a twist and the disciples hear them in their full and complete meaning as if they now come to know these things in their full magnitude for the, for the first time. There are three things that Jesus shares with his disciples. And the first thing is perhaps the most important. Jesus says to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. And the, the, the teaching of the authority and lordship of Christ is one that runs through the whole gospel. It runs through the whole Bible, even, you could argue. It is central to what the gospel is. Jesus is Lord. Matthew begins his gospel with a declaration that Jesus is the Messiah, the, the promised ruler, the promised king of God's people, Israel. And in Jesus' baptism by John, um, sort of the very beginning of Jesus' um, teaching and earthly ministry, we hear a voice call out from heaven saying, this is my son, whom I love, with whom I'm well pleased. And the language of sonship there, it refers in part to the Old Testament understanding of the king of Israel as God's son in places like Psalm 2. Again, we see Jesus' authority when he calls his first disciples and they follow without hesitation. They immediately drop their nets and they follow him because they recognize something in Jesus and in, in his call, this royal authority, this immediate call and obedience because of who Jesus is as the king. And we find in that same chapter, back in chapter four in Matthew's gospel, that uh, Jesus goes throughout Galilee, curing every disease among the people. And these are signs that prove his authority over the spiritual realm, over um, sickness and disease. And they prove they are signs of his identity as the Messiah. And crowds follow him, not only from Galilee, but from the whole area of Israel. And when the disciples first come to him 
on this mountain in Galilee, uh, Jesus sits down. And sitting down was the traditional position of a teacher. He sits down to teach. And as um, uh, Matthew's gospel and the gospels say, he, the crowds, as well as the disciples, are amazed at his teaching because he teaches as one with authority. He teaches, especially, this is especially emphasized in Matthew's gospel, he teaches as the new Moses, who comes as the one whom Moses tested to. But then comes the twist here at the end of Matthew's gospel. Because up until now, the emphasis in Matthew has been Jesus' authority in relation to him as the Messiah of Israel over of God's people, um, Israel uh, and Judah. Uh, but here we find this affirmed and expanded as Jesus comes to his disciples, not only as the Messiah of Israel, but as the one who has been given all, all authority over heaven and earth, over everything, over every nation. It's, it's almost like, because this is the first proper encounter, um, I think, but perhaps not. Um, one of the earliest encounters that Jesus has with his disciples following his death and resurrection. And it's, it's like the deep mystery and truth of Jesus' work in his suffering and death on the cross and in his resurrection. The self-offering of himself as the faithful king of Israel for his people is that it not only establishes and proves him to be the true Messiah, but also the king of the whole world, the whole cosmos. He shares fully in the authority of his father, the God of Israel, but who is also God over every nation and over all creation. There's also an interesting uh, little insight here uh, when we compare this to chapter four in, in Matthew, when Jesus was tested in the wilderness. And we find the devil tempts Jesus with a shortcut. The devil says to him, if you would only bow down and worship me, then I will give you all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. But Jesus resists the devil and says, worship, you know, quoting Deuteronomy, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. And in his continued faithfulness and obedience to God, to the true God. Jesus is given, and which leads to his death. Jesus is given authority not only in Israel, not only over the kingdoms of the earth, but over all of heaven and earth, an authority beyond what the devil offers him and was able to offer him. He is given all authority by his Father. And on this basis, we come to the second thing that Jesus says to his disciples. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And again, we find uh, Jesus, uh, what Jesus says, is his command and his commissioning of them is a repetition of a theme that's been present from uh, much earlier, from the beginnings of the gospel and in his call of the disciples. Because in Matthew 4, following this, his temptation in the wilderness, Jesus um, calls four of the disciples. And what does he tell them as he calls them? He tells them, I will make you fishers of men. I will make you fishers of people. That was always the aim, said Jesus. That was always the aim to, to, to call uh, followers of him who would make disciples, who would um, call others to follow Jesus. And very, and very soon afterwards, Jesus sits down on this mountain in Galilee and he calls his disciples to them, to him, and he teaches them 
So it teaches, him, teaches them the extraordinary way of life that he's calling them to live in his footsteps. And he teaches them with, I think, with the expectation that they will practice these teachings and pass them on. But here again, there, are, there, is, a, there is a twist. There are two twists. In Matthew, in, back in Matthew 10, when Jesus sends out his disciples, he sends them only to the people of Israel. But now here at the end, having brought um, his own mission to its finish, having completed the, the reconciliation needed uh, between humanity and God, he sends them out to all people. He sends them to the whole world. Now that Jesus is Lord of all heaven and earth, sitting down not on the hills of Galilee to teach, but at the, sitting down at the right hand of the Father to intercede and to rule, the disciples are not only sent to the crowds of Israel with whom they mixed and lived among their own people, their own flesh and blood, but they are sent to every nation. And that is where they are called to announce Jesus' lordship and authority. And, but the, the second twist is the way Jesus now explicitly commissions and sends them to baptize and to teach all that he had taught them. They are now to be the teachers. They are to be the ones who, who call people and even baptize people into relationship with God through Jesus Christ and, and in his name. Here he releases them to be the fishers of people that he promised they would become and, and called them to be from the beginning. You know, it's interesting if you reading Matthew 10, which is also a, uh, as an account of when Jesus sends out the disciples in the middle of the gospel during Jesus' teaching ministry, he sends them out with the task of curing physical sickness. He gives them power to cure physical sickness and raise the dead as signs of the the coming kingdom as um, signs of the, that accompany their proclamation of Jesus as the king. But here, I, I read, you know, he sends them with the task of applying uh, the, the healing balm of a deeper sickness, the sickness of, our, of human sinfulness. And that healing balm is, is baptism. Baptism, the sign of the forgiveness of sins, in which our sins are washed away. And also the, the gift of the teaching of Jesus. The teaching of Jesus that calls us, that calls the world to the holy way of life that we were called to, that we are called to live. And thirdly, Jesus finally tells them, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. As Jesus meets his disciples where it all began, Jesus commissions his disciples, where above all he spent time with them. Galilee was the place where Jesus spent the most time with his disciples, with his followers, where he was with them. There's a, there's a verse in Mark four, chapter 4, in Mark's account of Jesus' calling of the apostles of the, the first disciples. And it says that he called his disciples to be with him. And it says he called them also to send them out to proclaim the gospel, but it also calls them very simply to be with him, to belong to him, to spend time with him. And this final word here, these of the Matthew's gospel of what Jesus shares with his disciples, these are it's a re reaffirmation too of the declaration of the name given to Jesus at the very beginning. Emmanuel, God with us. 
this is who he is. It was true from the beginning and will continue to be, to, uh, to be true. As Jesus says, I am with you until the very end of the age. Except that now the, 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 the twist, so to speak, is that he will no longer be with them in the way that he has been. He will be with them through the presence of the Holy Spirit, through the scriptures inspired by the Spirit, and through the church community called by him and through the disciples. He will be with them spiritually rather than in the earthly way that he was with them during his time on earth. And they will need to continue to trust and believe in his presence as, as they did when he was with them. So you might be thinking, okay, Ben, that's all very well, but what relevance is this to us? What relevance is this to me? What relevance is, is this to us as the church today as uh, disciples of Jesus who are commissioned today? What, what do we learn here? Well, I, the sense for me is that as the church and as individual disciples, I think there's, there is teaching in this calling back the way Jesus directs the disciples to go back to Galilee. Because as the church and as individual disciples in our relationship with the Lord, we are always being called back to the beginning, to the basics of who Jesus is we are, and, and who we are as his disciples and what he has called us to do. And I think this is a real, this is, I think, really important for us to, to hold on to. Because it can be tempting to look elsewhere, to look elsewhere for insight into our true purpose in life, to fixate on new ideas or to just be distracted or to strain forward. No, we are called back call back to the to the hills of Galilee where Jesus taught we are called back again to the hill of Calvary where he died for us we're called back to the garden with the empty tomb where Jesus rose from the dead we are called back to the scriptures time and time again we're called back to that place of prayer we call back time and again to our first love but there is also, as, uh, in, in preparation and um, for the purpose of sending us out into the world, there is the challenge here of our vision, our vision and understanding of Jesus being enlarged and expanded. We, we know who Jesus is, and yet we still don't fully know. There is still more, as there was for the disciples, you know, perhaps... We, we have a sense of Jesus who is, whose authority is limited and we forget that he has all authority in heaven and on earth over every power, over every name. Perhaps we, we forget or we shirk the challenge to not only try and be obedient, but also even to hear the call to be teachers, to, to go and to teach others, perhaps by even just an example, but to teach what Jesus has commanded us. Perhaps too we, we shirk and avoid the, the call, the command to go and to call people into into the relationship that Jesus is calling them to have with him, to call them to baptism. And perhaps too, we, we, we forget so easily that Jesus is really, really is here with us now. He's with us in our coming and going. He's with us in our workplace, in our families, in our struggles, in our grief. He's with us when it doesn't seem like he's with us. We don't feel it. Um, 
And, but Jesus again and again, he, he, he stands by his promise and he, he comes true on his word. So let me pray to finish. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you are here with us now. Lord Jesus, thank you that you, you call us again to follow you and to confess you as the one who has all authority in heaven and on earth. And Lord, we pray that you would send us, you would send us to people of all kinds, Lord. Send us with, um, send us in power and in, in confidence uh, to call people to you, to confess you and your authority in, in their lives, to pray for them, and even to, and to invite them into this church community where we are learning to obey your every command. And Lord, where we can doubt your presence, where we maybe feel your absence, Lord God, would you assure us that Jesus is here with us, that he has not departed from us, but that he is with us. In his name we pray. Amen. <clears throat>